So first of all, t tell us like what do you do for Oracle? Uh, so I lead the uh, product management team for serverless technology at Oracle. And I'm also working on the open source uh, FN project, which we're involved with with serverless. Okay. And so you had a, a presentation about uh, serverless with Java. So yeah. challenges and triumphs. Yes. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, I, I thought this is an interesting topic because uh, functions is hot, you know. Uh, as I sort of said in the abstract, right, functions are hot, but, but Java is not the leading language for use in functions today. So there's sort of informal, like non-scientific sort of community surveys type, type stats that show Java is somewhere between 7 and 14% of users are using um, Java. Um, it's more commonly used in a functions context by larger companies, and I think it's sort of more mature enterprise developer versus the sort of the hacker, you know, playing around type of thing. So people are building serious applications. Maybe there's a drift towards Java, just like that uh, James Governor article. You know, when companies grow up, do they become, you know, or web companies grow up, do they become Java shops? So I was sort of, is that possible? And so I was looking at that, and um, there sort of what are the reasons why people would be maybe not using Java, or maybe misconceptions. So there's a couple of things. One is maybe misconceptions about Java, and the second part was what's going on in the Java community, the ecosystem, to sort of make it make Java more suitable for this, this sort of the functions world is very small, like small, short-lived applica applications. And we know that in the past, people will think of Java as an enterprise, long-running, you know, application server type languages, right? So the JVM, and you just had a guest on talking about garbage collection, right? So, you know, the, the garbage collectors and the, uh, the JIT compilers are, are good uh, for, you know, are designed for longer running things, to keep them alive, keep them fast. But if something lives only 100 milliseconds, then what's the garbage collection strategy? Is there a garbage collection strategy? Um, can you start the JVM that fast? And do you want to do a JIT compiler? It doesn't, has no time to learn, mm -hmm. right? It'll be dead before it's learned anything. So these are all the sort of the interesting, interesting problems in our space. Right. So, so what are the, what are the suggestions? <laughs> or yeah, well, that's good. That's of course, yes, those are the problems, <laughs> right? So, so what's going on is uh, you're seeing, so we're, so first off in the context of what we're doing. So this, mm -hmm. I, I sort of have to start from what I, what I know. So we're on the FN project, we're packaging um, application code functions inside of Docker containers. And those containers are spun up and spun down to, as functions, right? They contain a function. And so some of the problems we are dealing with are, are related to Java in container. So the, the OpenJDK project has all kinds of jeps around making a Java a good citizen in inside containers. So that's good news. So they're already working on this. So things like when you ask, um, when you make a call and ask the, the JVM, how much memory do I have? In the past, it has just reported the memory of the, the host and not the container, which is completely you know a bad idea. So there's all kinds of good work going on, independent of what we're doing, just in the, the JDK project, OpenJDK. So that's good. So Java will be a good citizen running inside of a container. That's step one. Um, and then there's a, a number of technologies. Like we're concerned, again, with this, this strange use case we have of small, short running, start up fast, run for a while, and then quit. So part of that is starting up fast. And so people talk, complain, oh, Java doesn't start as fast as Node or whatever. Uh, but there's all kinds of technologies in, in Java, like um, uh, class data sharing, CDS. Um, which has been in the JDK since 2004. So you can basically, every time the JVM starts, it parses all the JDK classes. It reads bytecodes, builds in memory structures. And so you pay that every single time. So of course, way back in 2004, obviously before that, they said, you know, that's something we could, we could do upfront. So they pre-parse and produce an archive of, uh, you know, sort of more in-memory structure uh, versions of the classes. So pre-compiled -pre to a degree. So if you do that, your JVM starts faster. Then they also added application CDS, so you can take your application code and do the same. Uh, so again, these little techniques for to boot the JVM faster. And then sort of the next logical step is, well, why don't we just compile the whole thing to machine code, made of machine code. And there's actually a there's research work on that. You can compile your code into a shared library and link it, which is really good. And then of course, the next thing, which I'm sort of most interested in is, is uh, the Graal VM work, which is everyone's hot on Graal and for good reason, right? So uh, we're using the native image um, feature of the Graal VM to compile a complete application into just a binary. Essentially, it's a binary with a garbage collector attached to it. And that has very fast startup times. Uh, it's also very small. So one of the, again, this back to this container uh, use case. 
moving containers around is expensive if you want to try and get from sort of your repository to where you want to run the code. Uh, big images are costly to ship around. It, it's going to hurt your latency. So by having small images, like using Grawl's uh, native image compilation, uh, I can move these things around faster. And again, it helps my latency, my startup time. So there's all kinds of interesting things they're doing. Um, and we're working with the, the Open JDK, open JDK, sorry, the open uh, source FN project. We're working um, with the Grawl team. They've contributed for us uh, support for producing sort of boilerplate functions like here's here's a basically a build and a template for you to go and work with so you can build and deploy crawl based uh, functions so that's a new feature and that's that's very exciting but there's even more things like every time I turn around there's some new feature uh, there was a blog post recently from the crawl team on isolates um, isolates are um, the ability to run um, some code in an isolated space it's almost like having your own VM like a mini VM or I shouldn't say VM, um, overused term, but an isolated uh, virtual machine within the virtual machine. And your code runs, and when it quits, they, they close it all down. So what that means is um, there's no cleanup to be done. So if I'm, there's no garbage selection required either. I can turn off the garbage selector. If you think about it, I have a short running process. It's going to run in this like sandbox space. And when it's done, I just delete the whole thing. So why would I spend time, why would I spend memory cycles, um, CPU cycles, garbage collecting when I know it's going to be around for the whole thing is going to live 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds whatever it is it's gone so this we haven't actually incorporated support for that but there's some interesting features there it also uh, offers a certain sanity so, or sanitation right so it keeps the code from touching anything else all your code in this isolate can't leave junk around for the next invocation so in the way functions work in uh, the FN model uh, we're reusing the container we're reusing the VM and sort of running the function so um, if we want to have pure, pure, like really ensure that the function runs in a clean space, these isolates could be used. So there's all kinds of cool things in the in the Java space uh, that we're leveraging for functions. But no one's, you know, it's kind of cool, maybe kind of geeky technology, but you know, really valuable. And so I want to talk about it. Like there's all kinds of cool things going on in Java, and yet everyone's talking about Python. Like come on, you know. <laughs> so. No, that's is um, and um, so Graal is also a cross uh, language. So yes, that's right. So then, also if if something is not, um, yeah, I mean, you could have um, a microservices for uh, with different languages as well. Yes, you could do interop too. So one of their big use cases is well, what if you've got some really good library in Python or Node or whatever, uh, and you want to leverage from your Java application? So they do add this polyglot uh, capability. So it's a complete it's a completely interesting ecosystem of itself, which we can embed inside of a function. So that function space, that, that function use case, becomes much more you know uh, open for, for whatever they have to do to solve your problems, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, so where can people find more information? Uh, I would start website? them on uh, fnproject.io, okay. which is the landing page for the, the project. And from there, you can get to tutorials, GitHub. Everything's on GitHub, right? Um, and and um, tutorials, docs, it's all there. Um, there's a link to YouTube. We, uh, maybe we'll have a link to this on YouTube. <laughs> sure. And um, and also we're working on, of course, I, I do work for Oracle, right? So I, and, and we're building a commercial uh, cloud service on this FN project. So we're it's really interesting to to try and build a uh, managed cloud service because that experience is helping us feed back into the open source. Like you know, we're trying to use it. We're trying to do things with it. So it helps us understand what are the flexibility points that need to be there to fit into a a, a given environment. Because the FN project was designed to be embeddable, essentially. It's not trying to be this appliance where it solves the world's problems. It's more of a, it's a functions as a service piece that you would add to your ecosystem. So if you've got database, you've got messaging, you've got functions. And so it needs to plug in. And so we're learning about, you know, how is it to plug it in? Like, does it work? Does, can, you, can you get what you want? So it's good to have this sort of experience feeding back into open source. Yeah, I mean, you should get. Uh, customer feedback to exactly right. The platform, right yeah and then the the um then this it is open source so we're having community uh, interest uh contributions uh there's some interest right now around c sharp for example so um i don't know c sharp or I, I knew it a long time ago a little bit but um there's people who want to do c sharp so sure you know it's uh anyone can contribute language support um to to the platform so that's that's what we'd want to do yeah right yeah so so you're encouraging so so if people want to give you then they, I mean, it's all part of the GitHub experience? It's all on GitHub, yeah. So okay. there's GitHub issues, there's uh, that. There's also Slack. So 
um, all the developers who are working on it in open source and the Oracle developers um, are all on Slack. So there's a link again to the Slack channel on fnproject.io. So you can find everyone there and ask questions. So there's a lot of people who are trying out FN for the first time. Um, if they're having some problems or questions, they just go onto Slack and just find, get help from the from the core developers. Cool. So yeah, good, great yeah. chance to yeah. try the FN project and, and yeah. provide feedback. Be great if people do. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.